If you were born at any time between 1995 and 2007, you probably know what Adobe's Flash is and have probably used it before yourself, maybe without even realising. The software was everywhere in the early 2000s, about 90% of computers had it installed and the majority of its use was for Flash games, which were many people's first experiences into the world of video games. But where did it go? During the dawn of the new millennium, technology was rapidly advancing. The days of dial-up internet were rapidly fading away and broadband overtook at never before seen speed, giving people a newly found freedom to find and make whatever they wanted online. But what did people use this new found freedom for? Or to make and play games of course, what else would you do? And thankfully, Flash came along around this time too, with an incredibly simple system for developing and editing games, actively inviting beginners to share their creations in the community for everyone to see, usually hosted on Newgrounds and Miniclip during this time. Miniclip being better known this day now for their non-Flash based games such as Agario and 8 Ball Pool, one of the biggest mobile games ever. But what kind of Flash games were available during this time, I can hear you asking, as a lot of the popular Flash games which many of us know were released after this point. It is a good question to be fair, as this era of Flash mainly had a lot of smaller creators attempting to find their big break, but none really made it. The biggest games of the era were probably Whack Your Boss and Ultimate Flash Sonic both of which had a premise which the title would explain fairly well. Well there was one big one, and I guarantee more than half of the people watching this video have played it before. Neopets. For the five people watching who don't know what Neopets is, I'll sum it up briefly. Neopets was, or still is, a virtual pet website in which you could care for, feed and dress up your digital friend. These activities were funded by credits which could either be bought or earned from playing a large range of flash based mini games on the site which also gave rewards for getting high scores on each game as well as placing into the leaderboard which could also be viewed on the site and compare it against your friends. On top of this, the game also contained a vast array of extremely rare items, some being one of a kind even, which many of the player base regularly search for and try to add into their collection, which clearly shows the eagerness and dedication people have towards the game. In case that didn't sound convincing enough, events were constantly hosted on the site, with my favourite being the Altered Door Cop. I could make a whole video talking about the old door cop, but to sum it up, it's like a cross between lacrosse and football, but in Neopets, and it was probably one of the key events which brought the community together. Tamago2474 went into this in a lot more detail in his Neopets series, which I 100% recommend checking out. I feel like that summed up Neopets well enough, probably the biggest game of this era, with a huge following still to this day, despite the lack of updates and new features. However, Flash short films were fairly big during this time probably being the peak to them to be fair, with some of the most popular YouTube videos of all time being made through Flash, with some of them being the infamous Badgers by Mr Weebles, which was just 3 minutes of pure suffering to be honest, that song still gets in my head sometimes, Salad Fingers, which I feel like everyone knows at least somewhat well, and also Happy Tree Friends, a series that everyone goes into thinking it's going to be the next MLP, completely innocent and full of joy, and comes out needing a new therapist over the horrors to saw. But everyone knows it, and it's managed to get its own TV series, so I guess it is something right. Technology continued to rapidly advance, and as it did, more people proceeded to make bigger and better things with Flash, which constantly became more and more popular. However, with great popularity comes great opportunities for profit, which leads to more companies beginning to use Flash 2 to try and capitalise on its success and the ease of use. One of the first companies to do this was Nickelodeon, the company behind many of the world's most loved cartoons of all time, which is Spongebob. However, a much smaller cartoon stood proudly in the spotlight for this game, one that was only rarely known in the United Kingdom, that one being Bin Weevils. Yep, you heard that right, Bin Weevils was a TV series before it ended up becoming its own game, and I bet most of the people watching didn't know that. It featured 13 episodes all only a few minutes long, which played in between full length cartoons. Not much is known about the original Bin Weevil's Flash game, as the majority of it is lost to time, with only screenshots of the old Weevil design, and very few worlds being viewable online. But it vastly differs from the modern version, which started during the relaunch in 2007, with a fresh 3D look, which was almost completely dropped just a few years later. During these years, however, the game was huge, featuring a range of secret Weevil service missions to partake in, fighting alongside Gam, Tink and Clark, a garden to look after, multiple shops to decorate your nest, as well as over 20 locations each filled with mini games, as well as just being a good place to hang out with mates. 
The game also had a weekly event named King of the Ben, in which players competed to get high scores and earn more from mini games to top the leaderboard and become huge for a week, becoming mini celebrities of sorts. It's clear why the game was so successful. For the people watching outside of the UK, however, there's probably another virtual world which comes to mind, with the highest player base of any Flash game ever, and higher than most modern games, with 300 million registered users. That game being Club Penguin, of course. Everybody in the NAN has heard of Club Penguin. The game was founded in 2005 and just kept growing and growing. It has quite an interesting backstory, to be honest, being founded by a small team known as New Horizons, comprising of Lane Merrifield, Dave Crisco, and Lance Preve, who was better known as Rocket Snail. I could go into so much detail about how the game was founded and its rapid growth and all that, and that definitely belongs in its own separate video. Anyway, enough about the virtual world. Sure, this might have been the peak time for these to come to be, marking a great margin for online flash games. But there were also some impeccable, incredible flash games made during this period that even rival most modern AAA games. That's not a hard feat to do, to be honest. But saying this was over a decade ago, it sounds much more impressive. One of my favourite games of all time, which is probably many other people's too, is Duck Life. This game never got old and constantly spiced up different aspects to make it fun. You train a duck in all sorts of different aspects such as running, swimming, flying and climbing with unique mini games for each skill to become the ultimate racing machine and compete against many different ducks whilst travelling the globe all to raise enough money to save your precious farm and whilst that might sound boring at first I can assure you it isn't later games constantly found new ways to repeat this formula and make it even better some of my favourite instances of this were Duck Life Battle which introduced a completely new mode with combat to compete against ducks rather than racing but more significantly, Duck Life 3 Evolution, which followed the simple gameplay of the previous game but with much more story. Now you start by selecting one of the four ducks, each of which specialises in a certain skill, and you guessed it by the title, the Evolve, slowly becoming more suited to the skills of the creepiest, in my opinion, being the swimming duck, which grows a flipper and practically becomes the mer duck, which is a truly horrifying sight. If you're still not hooked, then you're probably weird, as the series is still going to this day, with fully fledged console games as well now, with a ninth currently in development with a new 3D art style. I 100% recommend checking it out when it releases. Enough about Duck Life though, there were hundreds, probably thousands more huge Flash games which everybody remembers playing during the peak of Flash, and arguably the peak of gaming in general. Another key example, and probably the most significant Flash game on YouTube was Happy Wheels. This game was fucking nuts, controlling a ton of different vehicles ranging from a tandem bike a mobility scooter and even a pogo stick across a large variety of levels and world but the pre-built levels weren't what much of the fuss was about the community made levels were phenomenal with some of them hardly looking like they're in happy wheels sure the majority of them were all the same sword throws those drop things that got smaller with your pal but in between these fill in the recent tab there were some gems my personal favorite being the random pokemon ones that popped up every now and then they were that random they had no choice but to be fun Game developers also took note of the great fan made levels and added a featured tab to easily scroll through the good ones. Anyway, I haven't really touched on the whole YouTube following that the game had. Some of the greatest YouTubers of all time had their career made from these games, with videos being some of the most viewed to this date still. Jacksepticeye is the prime example of this, having made 100 videos on the series, with the first episode being his 13th most viewed video ever, with 21 million views, just emphasising how big Flash Gaming was at the time. For the next couple of years, not much significant happened in the flash gaming industry, except for a steady decline in players as two significant competitors to flash grew more significant every day. HTML5, which was easier to learn, as well as more useful in everyday life, but more significantly, the mobile gaming industry, which many flash games shifted toward, with their later releases being exclusive to these handheld devices. This, combined with a lack of new content, led to a slow, yet harmless death of the popularity of them, with no news being heard of Flash games for some time of the year at a time. That was until... 2017. 2017 was probably the worst year for Flash developers, fans of the charming titles built off of it, and even people who grew up on the games alike. January flew by, and not much happened, and people expected the same for February, except quite the opposite happened. Towards the end of the month, Disney announced the closure of the globally loved Club Penguin, after its extensive history spanning almost two decades to be replaced by a 3D remake, Club Penguin Island, which ultimately flopped and shut down just a year later in 2018. However, just doing this would cause even more outrage than there already was. 
So Disney, for once, showed empathy towards their fans and created a final farewell party, giving everybody free membership, placing trivia questions behind the map, and most importantly, finally confirming a rumour which spanned the game's entire history. Letting penguins tip the iceberg to be greeted with a blue hard hat, which was also mentioned in the rumours. As well as this, there was also a final message which read, Together, we can build an island, create a community, change the world, and even tip an iceberg. Waddle on. This message was viewable for just over a month before the game inevitably shut on the 29th of March 2017, and was arguably the best send-off we could have ever received, and still makes me cry to this day whenever I see it. I miss Club Penguin. This seemed like the worst news of the year, the end of the world arguably. Are we sure the mains weren't off by five years? That race sparked across the globe. Surely the year could only get better from here, right? But it didn't. In fact, it got much, much worse. The next few months rolled around with no problem, with most people going back to some of their favourite Flash games in hopes of them not shutting down and getting to that and getting that kick of nostalgia, almost shadowing what was to come just a few months later in July of the same year. Adobe announced closure and loss of support for their Adobe Flash software due for it being outdated and ultimately inferior to the many modern engines, as well as being a security risk due to the lack of updates in recent years, as well as the way SWF files, also known as Shockwave Flash, were formatted, ultimately making them unsafe. This was it, it was the end of an era, the games which many people grew up on were no more, or at least that's what people thought. There was a good side to the horrible news at least, sort of good. It wasn't losing its support for another three years, not until New Year's Eve of 2020, giving plenty of people chances to play their beloved Flash games for the next three years. However, many of them, such as Moshi Monsters, still chose to shut down before this final date, for reasons unknown to this day. The next three years passed, slowly and painfully, until finally the day came around, the final date of Flash. Many people's childhoods gone within an instant forever, marking the end of an era. And that leads up to the end of the video, is what I would say. However, in 2018, a group of people set off to create Blue Maximus Flashpoint. Blue Maximus Flashpoint was an archive of every single Flash game ever made in a simple app compatible with most PCs, ultimately saving Flash gaming for good, despite its sorrowful downfall. Even I've added a few games to the archive, such as the Club Penguin Beta minigames, as well as two Mini Monos minigames, and I recommend playing some of them. I swear it isn't sponsored, I just like Flash games. But seriously, now we're actually at the end of the video, with a somewhat brighter ending than what could have been. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm your host, The Info Arcade, and this was Flash Games Captivating History. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed.